uk which you can watch every sunday at 3 p.m well apostle grace thank you so much for joining me today well a pleasure is all mine emily thanks for having us greetings from uganda yes it is wonderful with the wonders of technology that we are able to have a conversation with you um, while you're in Uganda and we're here in London. So to begin with, Apostle Grace, can you just share with us about your life and what life was like for you growing up and when you came to faith? Thank you, Emily. Um, born and raised in Uganda, I think I was uh, about the age of eight when I was at uh, a certain field playing football and I overheard a guy preaching about Jesus Christ. And uh, when I walk there and I hear the good news, I was uh, originally Roman Catholic. And um, I felt that invitation in my heart to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And that again spelled my first vision about the Lord Jesus. Because as I was in a confession prayer, Jesus appeared before my very own eyes. And I touched my friends to see uh, whether they were seeing who I was seeing. And I realized they were not seeing that same God. And for me, that was the beginning of that relationship. And, and, and that's the God I've walked with. That's the God I've walked with all through until now. So yes, that's how I received Jesus Christ. Amazing. And can you share with us, you know, when did God call you to preach the gospel and to be in full-time ministry? It was about the age of 18. I was at university and uh, we'd gone somewhere with a group of friends to pray. And uh, I had an encounter. And um, the Holy Spirit did a work in my life that up to today I have no language or I have no power to put in two words. But I believe that was uh, the place of consecration. And um, like the experiences of Paul, I went to places that I, I, I had no words uh, of utterance. But it was the beginning of that that I felt the assignment and call of God in my life was really very clear. It brought the direction that I needed. And from then on, I set on to go evangelizing with my friends. And uh, the one notable thing I remember as well, the spirit world opened so dramatically. You know, I could hear in the spirit, I could see. And, and that was the beginning of my life since university, since I was in years old. And uh, it's been a journey day by day, and I've seen God reveal himself and walk. I've seen the lamb walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. You know, I've seen all manner of things God do. And so it's all of these things in my heart that have confirmed that not only has God been with me, but the assignment of my life has been so distinctively clear. Yes. Wow, that's incredible. And we're going to be hearing later on about, you know, you're going to share some testimonies with us about, you know, the healings that you have seen in your church. But before we get to that, can you share with us about Fanaroo Ministries? What is its vision? What is its purpose? And um, yeah, tell us about where your church is based as well. All right. So the, 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 the main mind and vision behind Fanaroo was actually the question, ultimate question that runs in the heart of many people. We read about a God who does the impossible. We believe that he can do anything, but we have lived in a generation that has not seen that manifestation of power before. And so, yes, we read about these wonderful men that did all these wonderful things in the Bible. Of course, we have examples of God's generals, men God has anointed and consecrated for the hour. In the years past, you know, modern history has shown uh, that people have seen God but we, in our generation, have had questions. If God exists, why can't this happen? If God exists, why don't we see that manifestation? And so it's through that vision that God impresses on my heart. And, and the voice was clear. He told me, go and prove to the world that I'm still the God who not only walks with men in their spirits, but I can show forth myself, I can manifest myself in the lives of people through signs, miracles, and wonders. But most importantly, that my word, the message, the gospel will be preached and that, that all will come to the saving knowledge of my son, Jesus Christ. And that's the mandate. That's what Nero represents. In fact, it's the, it's the Greek word translated to mean make manifest. It goes just beyond the signs, miracles, and wonders. It's the character of Christianity and everything that has to do with that. So we began that in 2014, in August the 7th, uh, here in Kampala. And it's through that that we have touched the world with several fellowships and ministries that have uh, subscribed under us. God has been faithful. We can only be humble. We can only be humble. 
Wow, that's incredible. And can you share with us about your church? Because um, it's a very big church. So share with us about the growth that has happened. All right. So in about uh, now six years, going into seven years, uh, we have been having attendances, physical attendances of close to about 10,000 people in a weekly service. And then we have uh, now a little over 78 uh, live streaming centers, and those are satellite uh, in the country that could push up to about 15,000 people as well, sitting on, 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 on online watching and gathering in different parts and districts of the country. Uh, we have fellowships, about 30 fellowships underground in mainland China. We have fellowships in the UK. We have fellowships in the United States. We have fellowships in Malaysia. We have uh, fellowships in Africa, several countries in Africa. It, it, it goes so wide. We do television programs on almost every continent of the world now. We're on uh, 12 major radio stations in the country. It's a big work. <laughs> it's a big work. Wow, that is incredible. But I'm sure at the time, how did you adapt and cope with that unprecedented growth of people attending your services you know, around the world? How, how was that process of setting it all up? All right. Usually three things come in play. One, prayer. God cannot move a certain way unless men pray a certain way. And one of the things that I thank God for my earlier pastors is that we were taught to really be praying people, to sit before the praise of God and allow him to speak to you. Because see, one thing people don't understand is that these multitudes, these hundreds and thousands of people, the millions that are watching or listening in, you can feel their hunger and it presses a certain need on your spirit to respond and be available to be able to feed them because they're like sheep receiving from God. So prayer has been one thing. And secondly, the message. The message has to be distinct because you see the Bible says that, you know, the, the, everything that defines God the essence of his power is manifested clearly when we have the revelation of the message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have made the word of God void of its power because of our tradition. We take about out the traditions and preach the word of God in its clarity. That has been a very defining experience for me. But also number three, um, we ha I also believe a lot in investing in people to build a ministry that serves men by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's not the lordship over men, but it's the service toward men. I believe that when a man truly dies to the self, that man will lose himself to the service of others. And the heart of God is where the drunkards are. It's where the prostitutes are. The people that come, I don't see them as statistics or numbers. I see them as lives. I see them as souls that Christ died for. And he demands that we do whatever has to be done, that we might see all these men come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So yes, those are the three things. Amen. Yeah, that's so powerful. And you know, Apostle Grace, there might be people watching right now who have struggled in their prayer life or have struggled in um, attending church or feeling like they have a relationship with God. So I would love for you just to share with us a little bit more on prayer and the importance of prayer and the importance of having a, a prayer life with our Father um, for those watching who may struggle with that. All right. Well, I believe that prayer will be and has always been the biggest attack uh, on everybody that I know because there's a difference between talking to God and talking with God. And this is the, 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 the definition of effective prayer. The ability of just to go beyond my communication to God to my communication with God. And if that's a communication with God, then we're talking about a relationship. And certain people do not know that God knows us so well that he does not need plastic and cosmetic to relate with us. He begins with the simplicity, you know, that we have with him. And he deals with us according to the revelation that we have concerning him. And that's why it's important. I always tell people, that you can never build an effective life of prayer when you don't have the right revelation of God. You see, how will you intercede when you don't have the revelation of the mind of the person that you're interceding to, you know? And so we, my, my heart towards all that have been struggling with prayer, you're not going to have 17 steps of how to have effective prayer uh, beyond the relationship that you're supposed to build with God personally. And that's going to come or begin with the genuineness of your heart to go to him, you know, in all brokenness, 
and in all clarity of heart as to how you feel, you start to build a conversation with him. And the biggest breakthrough is when you start to hear him speak back to you. It's the most revealing thing because the voice of God carries a certain presence. It impacts and impresses a certain vision on the spirit of a man. And that's the beginning of understanding the assignment or mandate on your life. The giftings and callings of God are always available with us. They are without repentance. When it comes to the assignment of God, it's so definitive when God starts to relate with you and your mind, his mind is revealed to you. That's the beginning of the walk. And before you know that, prayer stops to become a routine. It starts to become a relationship that you're constantly having with the Father and the mind that you have towards what he has for the world and your participation in the same. Amen. Yes, that's so powerful. And Apostle Grace, I would love it if you could pray for any viewers right now who are struggling with that um, and just a prayer of encouragement for them in this season. All right, thank you. Now, before I pray, I'm going to say one simple thing that, you know, the, the prophetic realm has always been circular, that which is, was, and shall be. Ecclesiastes says so. Well, we're hearing of a plague in the world. It's not new to God. We've had plagues before. But I've seen that God has shown me that there is always a restructuring of human life and a redefining of destinies every time certain circles come back in human history. And I believe that we're living in a time more than ever before where God is speaking to us more clearly as things are weighing on us as believers, as the church is being questioned, where is your God? I believe that something is brewing up in our generation that is going to bring that answer to the world. And I believe that there are people, men and women, watching me right now, and in spite of all that is happening in the world, somebody feels as he is a still small voice telling them that God must be up to something. And I want to be a part of what God wants to do after all this storm is gone. Never forget that God is always up to something. When there's a casting down, there's always a lifting up of another. And so my prayer for you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is that as the lines are falling in pleasant places, as God is shifting and rearranging things right now, I feel that there's an advantage for those that will sit before God and are ready to break, to bend, and be killed, that they will lead to the fullness of what God is about to do in this world. And I pray for you, whoever is watching and listening, that you will be a part of what God is doing. I believe that God is aligning and raising men, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists for the work of ministry as the body of Christ is going to be a defied. And I pray that may you see signs, miracles, and wonders. May the anointing of God settle on you so distinctly and may he establish your strides with increase and multiplication in every aspect of life, even as we humble to hear the voice of God like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. And if that, if you're watching right now and if that encourages you or if that is a prayer for you, why don't you write it and let us know. Um, thank you, Apostle Grace, for praying that. And, you know, as well as um, talking about prayer, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I also would love to talk with you about the healing and miracles that you have seen at your church. Um, you know, there have been many and I'm sure countless stories that you have. But could you just share with us about this um, and what you have seen God do through your church? All right. Thank you. I think the, the recent one, the recent one, just this last weekend, they brought me a girl who was sickle cell. And she's been having crisis all her life. And I received a word of knowledge when I met her that this girl was sick and, and the Lord showed a lot. And I laid hands on this woman. And two days later, they take the girl to hospital. The doctors cannot explain how sickle cells have become normal. You see, th these are things people will not understand until you see. We have had experiences. Another time I prayed for a little girl uh, who had cerebral palsy. And the doctors have reports that cerebral palsy is incurable. As I'm speaking, this girl is 100% healed. She had a heart disease. The doctors told the mother that no science would ever make her child walk, talk, or live like any other normal child. As I'm speaking, this child is walking, living, speaking. She has defied all that the doctors could have said. You've seen the dumb speaking. You've seen blind people seeing before our very own eyes. Children born dumb since childhood. Age 11, a child speaks for their first time. And all God is telling us that miracles still exist. And I, I could share forever, but this is what I want to tell the world, that God is still in the business of healing men. Yes, that is so powerful. And you know, what, 
what would you say to those people who hear those incredible stories and think, oh, I want to see that in my life, or may not even think it's possible for them to pray those type of prayers or see those healings in their communities? What would you say to that? This is what I'll say to them. Many people have been delusioned by the way the world sees God. And we have been made to think and see the God of this world as the answer to everything. But I want to tell people that regardless of whatever circumstances that you could have gone through, it's one thing to have faith that God works. It's another to trust him personally for him to do it for you. God is always ready to see uh, the miracle and wonder when a man's life happened. If, and I hear still my believers here, that if we learn to walk out of the boat, the story of Peter, you see that many believers who are in the comfort zones of faith, they can only believe what is reasonable. They can only believe what is accountable and calculable. They're not able to believe God beyond what is beyond reason and calculation. And I tell people, learn to live outside the boat. Learn to walk on water. Learn to simply say, a sure word, I'm ready to walk. And I can tell you, even when miracles are happening in my own ministry, years before, before I had understood how this works, there was always fear in that heart. There was always these voices telling you it's not going to work, it's not possible, it won't happen now. But I have seen a God who is ready to show himself off when a man dares to believe. And so I tell them, dare to believe. Yes, I love that. Learn to live outside the boat. You know, we can get so comfortable in our routines and almost not being bold enough to pray those big, impossible prayers and really to trust God to move in our life in a powerful way. And, you know, you've just shared with us two incredible stories of healing that to the world could be seen as impossible, but to God, we know all things are possible. And what an encouragement that is for us today. And I think back to the past 18 months, being in a global pandemic, which has affected the lives all across the world. Apostle Grace, could you share with us the impact that the pandemic has had on your ministry and also what you have seen God do through you and your church, especially in the last 18 months of the coronavirus pandemic? Well, uh, firstly, the Lord, I have a very, very clear video uh, in 2019 prophesying about COVID, and, and I'll share that with you. The Lord had spoken to us about the disease that was coming in the world, cough-like, uh, flu-like symptoms, and how it was going to cripple the world and its economies. We had that. We, sh we prayed about it for many uh, many uh, weeks before, even when the world got to know about COVID coming through. And uh, I believe partly that, well, oh, fully, that our nation has been preserved, for example, in Uganda, because of prayer. But what beyond what I have seen in the deaths and, and, and testations of families of which we have no words to express the pain that families are going through, I have told people that, yes, buildings have been closed, places of worship have been closed, but the church of Jesus Christ is not in the four walls of the church. His power is still evident and exists to still deal with anything as he has done before. What we have seen as a ministry, yes, there's been lockdowns, families and people have been in questions to and fro. But again, the message more than ever before in our ministry has been preached. We have grown more in the time of COVID than our ministry has ever registered growth before. Why? Because I'm telling the church across the world that buildings, places of worship could be closed, but the church of Jesus Christ is not closed and the gospel is not in chains. Yes. Amen. That is so powerful. And, you know, we look at, you know, where we have come in the past 18 months, but Apostle Grace, what is your hope and prayer for the future of the church coming out of a pandemic? This is what I see. I have seen that we are being awakened. That no, even, yes, we've had conspiracies of what is and what isn't, and I don't want to go into that. I'm not so quick into judging things that way because History has told us before that this has happened before. But this is what I've seen, that there has been and is going to be a constant reawakening of the world, especially for us as the church, because this period has posed a lot of questions for us who believe in Jesus Christ. And whether we want it or not, we can no longer hide beyond, uh, behind the shells of, 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 of what we say we believe without being able to demonstrate it. What I see is that the church is waking up and people are praying more than they've ever before. People are seeking the face of God more than they've ever before. 
And what has God promised? That if any people, if any man, which are called by my name when they humble themselves and pray, I hear and I turn and I heal. I feel that the church is going to come out stronger than it entered. For whatever the enemy aims for bad, or as history has proved that God turns out for good. And I'm going to emphasize this, that the church will always stand stronger in every dispensation of prestation. The church has been tried way beyond, and they were persecuted in the earlier years of church history, and some even went underground. But the church always comes back stronger and mightier. And that is what we're doing. Even as a ministry, I'm telling people that let us be in a place of waiting upon God in prayer, asking ourselves the question, what's our mandate after COVID? Because I tell people, if your ministry has not been relevant in the time human history needed it most, then seek God even deeper that it should be relevant when this goes. Yes. Wow. That is so powerful. Apostle Grace, I'm absolutely loving speaking with you. And I'm sad that our time is almost coming to an end. Um, But before we close, I would love just for you to speak about your program that is airing on TVN UK every Sunday at 3 p.m. And I would love to ask you, what can people expect from the program? And what really is your hope for viewers when they watch? All right. Thank you. For viewers, especially in Europe, we, I can tell you, and I'm not boasting, I say this in humility, that we have one of the fastest growing movements on the continent of Africa. We have seen, I, we hold meetings of, uh, a crusade meetings of 40, 50,000 people. And I feel that God is doing something new. God is not done with Europe. God is not done with the United Kingdom. God is not done with the world. Even through these programs, I see that I thank God what TBN is doing for people like us because you have believed in our voices and you have allowed us to amplify this message across the world. This is what I'm telling people. But every time you're tuning in into our service, and I believe many men and women of God, God is raising in this time more than ever before. We want even the people in Europe to believe that things are going to come back again. We're going to see a move of God more than ever before. We believe to see meetings across Europe of people sitting 100 or 200,000 people, 500,000 people, 20,000 people coming and gathering in one place for the sake of God. And not only in one city, but moving city upon city, continent upon continent. Yes, people are saying that God is leaving certain places of the world. But I would like to believe that his promises are still true now as they were before. And I believe and think that there are people right now in, in, in Europe in America, across the world, believe in God for the next move. I'm just so glad to be a part of this story. And I believe that as we share these things, we inspire many, especially people my age, to believe God, to see God in their generation more than ever before. Amen. Yes. And we, and we receive that. We, we want to see stadiums full. We want to see crusades. We want to see that here in the UK and in Europe. Well, Apostle Grace, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing with us all about Fenero Ministries. And really, it's been such an honor and a privilege to be able to speak with you today. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Emily. And if you would like any more information about Fenero Ministries, you can go to the website, which is on the screen for you now. And remember that you can watch their service every Sunday on TBN UK at 3 p.m. Until next time on TBN Meets, goodbye.